Hello, my name is Soph. You can call me Floofty, because I'm Floofty Fizzlebeans on Tumblr. I'm going to be teaching you how to sew your very own Grumpus plush. If the brand new fan gamer Philbo plush is out of your price range, or maybe you just want someone that fan gamer is probably not going to sell for a little bit, you can do something as cool and awesome as Floofty here, or something simple. I personally have been building up to making my very own Floofty with cute paw pads, hair, tail, they even have goggles. Today I'm going to be using Snorpy to teach you guys how to follow my pattern. I have a little ruler up here if you want to know what scale I'm working at, but the pattern that I made should work at any size as long as you size everything the same. They are meant to work in proportion with each other. Unless you figure out how to make it work, then more power to ya. You are going to need one butt, four of the leg pieces, two foot pads, four of the arm pieces, and two of the body. That is all you need to make a blank grump. But in order to fully assemble him, you are going to need some elastic, the color of his nose, and some white for his eyes. And for Snorpy in particular, you're gonna need some way to make his hair, but that's an adventure for your own. I've done it three different ways so far. For now, we are going to focus on the main Grumpus body. Now you may notice that the edges of my pieces are a little messy. That is because, well, my sewing machine will take care of all of the weird edges, uh, and I can just cut it off. It'll all be on the inside. But if you are hand sewing, uh, it will be make a little bit more of a difference uh, on the end product. Now steps one, two, and three are all interchangeable uh, simply because they have nothing to do with each other at first, but I'm going to order them anyway. Your first step is going to be to sew the two body pieces together. You sew along the top edge, leaving the flat bottom open. You still need to attach the butt. Step two is going to be sewing along the edge of the paws. What you want to do is sew all the way around, sewing two of the paw pieces together, and leave about an inch or however big you think you can fit all of your fabric through on one side. I used to leave the open bit over here, that's why Philbo has some really weird shoulders. But I found that leaving it on the wrist or side of the arm makes for a cleaner finish. Step three is going to be sewing the legs. These are really different, I'm finding. I might have to tweak that. You're going to sew a straight line down the back and one from the top of the leg down to the tip of the toe. It will leave you with a tube shaped like a foot with two open ends. Theoretically, you could close this off, but don't do that. That makes everything really hard. And so the only pieces you would have touched are the two foot pads and the butt. I'm not going to stop calling it the butt. Now what I'm actually going to do is sew these all on like an actual proper sewing machine, but just for demonstration's sake, I have my mini sewing machine on my other table. My uh, full-size sewing machine is just over there and makes horrible noises. This makes even worse noises, but you get to see how I sew. Alrighty, as you can see, we have two arms, two legs, and a body. Except all of them are 2D. What you're going to do now is you're going to sew a paw pad onto the very end of a paw. What you're going to do is open up the bottom of the foot. What you're going to do is open up the bottom of the foot, spread it out, gently align the paw pad so that it is curving in. You should be able to fold it back in half and have it not like pop out of it. And I am not very precise with this. I just sort of sew around and it usually works. But if you wanted to be super precise, get as much foot coverage as possible, you could pin it in place and hand sew around right at the very edge. But Snorpy does not have very big feet, and I don't care if he does or not. So I am simply going to sew along uh, here with my sewing machine. Then you are going to take your body piece, 
And this is where you choose what is the front and which is the back. Switch it right side out to see which side looks better. And if you have a specific patterned fabric and your OC has specific stripes on the front, good way to choose that. And on the fabric piece that you've chosen to be the back, you are going to attach one half of the butt. This right here is where you would attach any tails if you would like to make them the most clean they could be. Uh, you could cut right here and tail out and then sew it back up and it would be clean and even, but I'm not going to give my Snorpy a tail. Or am I? I have some orange fabric. I'm going to give Snorpy a tail. Yeah! Impromptu sewing moment. I have some orange felt here. So I'm, I'm just gonna fold this. Cut a triangle. And then... Use the sewing machine. I did this. Oh god, I forgot how stiff this orange is. Okay, new plan. Flat tail. See, this is trial and error. This is, uh, this is how I make every single one of my plushies. I just kind of go with it. And then, well, it's out like this. Maybe. Fold here. Fold here. Do that. Remove corners. Round it out. Go down. Unroll it. Once again, clean up corners. And round it out. Might even deepen everything. Because I couldn't get too deep. Gotta make sure it's uneven and a little weird. Let's angle it like this, cut a little notch, and sew it in there. Be right back. Now this was like six layers of fabric, so my sewing machine did not like that. But now we have a cute little tail. Look at that. Look at that Snorpy. When I make Chanlo, he's gonna be so happy. I'm very proud of this, if you couldn't tell. Anyway, back to the tutorial. With your tail in hand, I guess, this was not planned. You, once again, sew the butt. Ah, yeah. That's a Snorpy. Now, sewing will always take some finagling. Let's see, there's like a teen... There's a teeny tiny little opening there that someone's toes could stick out of and uh, you're just gonna have to you know argue with your sewing machine about that do I have any general sewing machine tips nope uh, I have a spiritual bond with my sewing machine that I've had since age five and I can't explain any of my methods all right all the pieces are coming together you have all of the individual pieces sewn. Now, what you're gonna do after this is you're going to turn them, stuff them, and start assembling. What's this giant flap here? That's where everything comes together. Don't stuff the body just yet, just the arms and legs. Uh, stuff time. I am using polyester stuffing uh, just the normal fluffy stuff, uh, but you may see some scrap fabric in it because I am taking it from a giant squid that I made a decade ago. His name is Snart. You can stuff the different pieces as much as you want. Cause just like Build-A-Bear, you have different choices for desired cuddliness, uh, but you're only really gonna feel that in the body, so don't worry about it too much. Just try and get the limbs all evenly stuffed. You don't want one floppy leg and one stiff leg, do ya? Unless you do, then by all means, go for it. 
If your plushies keep turning out lumpy, don't forget to fluff your fluff. Fluff your fluff and stuffs by pulling it apart and putting it back together again. That removes lumps. Now you got these little chicken legs and you got these little snorpy legs. Uh, good tip, don't stuff your legs all the way up to the tippy top. You want a bit where you can pinch right at the very end. Oh yeah, and hand so the arms closed. I'm just doing a ladder stitch to get these guys closed. Uh, definitely look up a different tutorial other than mine on doing this particular stitch. It is just... I'll put the diagram on screen. But it allows you to close things super duper uh, cleanly. You'll actually see that on the Don't No Talk Me Angry post that I posted of the Young Horses fan gamer Philbo perfectly shows off the end ladder stitch on the back of his design. What you're gonna do, turn your body right side out, and take your legs and figure out where you want them. Is you take, figure out where you want it, flip it up like that, slip down to the pinch, you're pinching it. And I usually just take it straight over to the sewing machine, but I guess the professional way to do that is to pin it in place. And that lets you get the placement for both of them. Now you might need to stuff the body to get your placement uh, exactly the way you want, but remember to unstuff it, i.e. take the stuffing out, before you go over to the sewing machine, uh, just because it makes it so much easier. You're just gonna sew just along the legs as close to the bottom of the body as you can, just to hold it all in place. Now you got a guy with legs. You can make him dance at this point. Now, theoretically, ah, oh, I did this part wrong. One sec. All right, back to my arm thing. Theoretically, you should uh, string the arms next, but uh, I haven't found uh, great luck or uh, attention in doing it this way. So what I usually do, let me grab a stuffed grump to show you. Feeble. And I'll take some elastic, a little bit less than what I want, and attach one end to one arm, cut a hole, pull it through, and attach it to the other arm so that I have posable arms that can spin a million degrees and uh, hold their pose. But if you want, you can just sew the arms directly to the sides of the body and do something slightly more akin to Fungus Re's, uh design. It's uh, a lot more like this, but these arms are what I what give the Grump like a fun little squishy looking shape. On Egabel in particular, it like actually makes her design a little interesting with that little squish in. She is so soft, and I love her. But theoretically, you can do that before you stuff it, which is what I'm going to try here, and if it doesn't work, I'm just going to not do it, and cut this part out, and uh, most of the explanation, just put these guys on at the end. 
I'm using two layers of elastic just to give it some extra strength. Yeah, this is where you gotta get out the needle and thread for yourself. Ah. This is why I don't do it till it's stuffed. It is incredibly difficult to figure out how high up you need to do it. Because it's always lower than you think. I sewed someone's OC and I tried doing it while it wasn't stuffed. And uh, I'm very glad that the OC has a neck ruff because there is no other way for me to hide that mistake. So we're gonna do something brilliant. I'm going to stuff an armless Snorpy, hold up the arms to him, cut the holes, and then unstuff him. Then I can do the part that's easy when it's easy. You uh, pick where you want your joints joint to be. This is where you choose which one is left and which one is right. Super securely placed. Like, extremely secure. I'm doing like five rounds. This is where having a helper or maybe three hands would help a whole lot. I just tied a knot there three times. Pull the elastic through one, pull the elastic through to the other, and look at how thin he is. We must fix this. Oh, this is a lot easier. Fun fact, this whole thing that I'm showing you is completely optional. You could just uh, bef sew the arms onto the side of the body and then add a, an extra stitch on the inside going all the way through and tighten it to get the shape that I like. But then you sacrifice the longevity of your pose. Uh, because the more you twist the string, the more strain you put on it, and just like attaching it like this gives you a poseable doll. And that is so cool, isn't it? We're going to stuff him to see how he looks. Hey, isn't it that guy from Garden of Bon Bon? Yeah, I'm so self- so conscious of Wambus looking like that thing from Garden of Bon Bon. Oh, this is significantly harder to stuff with the elastic in the way. But it looks good in the end. Alright, I'm going to make it harder to stuff still, but make it easier on my hands when sewing is the important part. Yeah, we are turning it inside out again. One more time, you're green with it! It is kind of difficult to get all of the everything inside, but it'll be worth it, I promise. You're gonna sew bzoop, all the way around until you get, like... It's significantly harder to sew it closed with the arms in there, too! Alright, so I got more than what I said. Uh, open, and an arm is already coming out because I physically could not shove this much stuff underneath the hump of my sewing machine. And as you can see, it did not like that. So, what I'm going to recommend is that you hand sew this entire front half yourself. And when you're hand sewing, you can have it pre-turned. Oh. Ah. Oh. So these are things that I'm going to have to fix by hand sewing. Just like any art, sewing never works perfectly on the first try, or the second, or the third, or the fourth, or the fifth, or the twelfth, or the hundredth. See, this is just a mistake that I am fixing and not an actual step. But. Maybe this can teach you how to fix your mistakes. Maybe you'll do exactly the same thing as me and know that you need to ladder stitch uh, the back of the leg uh, when your holding stitch comes through. Oh, that's looking like Snorpy. This looks a little 
naughty. Apologies. This is what happens when you make the butt the part where you sew it up. The closing edge? I'm self-taught. I don't know the official way to talk about these. Oh, but this is looking pretty good. Shout out to uh, those couple Bug Snacks fix where uh, Floofty accidentally drops Snorpy on his head or something. Because that's what I'm fixing right now. Now you can close them up. Theoretically, you could reverse my steps and sew the front on with your machine and sew the back with your hand. Uh, and honestly, that might even look better since uh, the weird scrunchy uh, pattern that ladder stitch leaves sometimes might look better in the back or be hidden. Uh, and it's totally up to you. It's an art, not a science. Despite how much of my identity I place on Floofty. Now you have a Grumpus for you to decorate and paint pretty smiles on. That is, well, arts and crafts. Lots of fabric glue can be used. I recommend using felt. For this, just because it sticks to other fabrics temporarily. Ah, uh, I'm going to record the process of me making a little face for my boy. Let's get a nose on this bad boy. Noses are where things can get a little fun and funky. You could simply do a flat nose and glue it on, but I prefer to sew it and make it 3D, and I genuinely have no idea how I do it. I can, like, say that I make the nose a little bigger, and then I sew just the top half, uh, stuff it, and then scrunch it into the right shape, and then sew it until it's the right shape. But that's not exactly helpful to most people, but I promise you can get it. Alright, and now we have an almost complete Snorpy. He's got paws, hair, a blank face, and um, way too much hair actually. I'm going to give him a haircut. That is the best part of uh, making your own dolls. You can give your favorite character a haircut and just, you know, chat with them about their day, about the grumpinati, how it's ruining everything, style their hair. If your OC has hair and keeps springing up like this, you can either hold your hand here until it it obeys or you can start sewing it down in place just directly to the head or you can take an iron not a not a hair iron a fabric iron and just smush that down um i kind of like it springy and I might just put a couple of them down to cover up a bald spot. In any case, this means you're ready to paint. Yeah, you aren't gonna need too much paint. Like, you could theoretically do this with a Sharpie. But I prefer to use plain old acrylic paint. If you want, like, longevity and just general more. Uh, you should use fabric paint if you think you're gonna put your little guy in the washing machine. Even then I think acrylic paint would survive. Line a little smile. All right, he's got a smile! I do a first stroke vaguely where I want just to get the placement right. 
Snorpy is anxious enough that uh, staying at this size wouldn't be too out of character. Uh, but I'm not. Once your paint is dry, you have one grumpus. Ready for you to do whatever you want. Display, snuggle, dress up. I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to make clothing in this video. That would be an entire separate video. But Snorpy's uh, apron is simple enough. You could just do a green rectangle with some string on it. Get something simple for him to not be naked. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'll try and answer any that I have. And have a lovely day.